Hey guys, today I just wanted to show you just one of the ways to go about doing white concrete countertops. Um, I want to do a shout out to Z Countertop Forms. I used a lot of their products for this project, really liked them, and they're going to be who I kind of walk through their website on what I'd recommend on getting and what I used. So let's make some of these. So Z Countertop Forms is the company that I got most of my product form for this project and I was really happy with um, all of the quality of stuff that I got. They do stuff for both pools and countertops. So what you want to do if you're getting started is you want to go to their products and the first thing you're going to want to choose is your edge profile. So they have go to countertop forms here they have multiple profiles to choose for I forget how many I think like five or six we ended up going with the square edge the great thing about these mold profiles is they're pre-calculated for a inch and five eighths pour and they have the front mold form and then there's also a rear form that goes on the back side of the counter so that, that you have an edge to street screet across and you can get a flat pour so what happens is you screw this edge on the left here down and once your pour is cured this outer L shape will just break off and your this other L here will be left underneath the countertop where you don't even see it. So once you decide what your profile is that you want to use, whether it be square or otherwise, we end up going with a square, you need to do some measuring and figure out whether you need their full package or their half package. The difference is in how many linear feet of edge you need so full package contains 48 linear feet and the half is 24 so do some measuring on how big your project is and how many linear linear feet you need the package comes with both the outer um, edge profile and then also the uh, form piece that goes up against your back splash wall so that you have that screening edge once you decide that the next thing that you're going to want to do oh the other option they have here is a uh, sink form so if you want to do an undermount sink they have a flexible adhesive strip so that if you are doing a shaped sink that's undermounted or even just a regular old sink that's undermounted what you can do is stick that you undermount your sink right to your dirt board and then you stick that to the proper height to create your shaped form and that will give you a concrete undermounted sink that's another form option they have there for that the next thing you're gonna wanna do is see how much concrete you need this if you're gonna do the white concrete like we did this is a one white concrete countertop mix you it's a little more expensive than doing gray. It's $29 for a, what is it? I forget how many pounds, 50 pound bag. So you're going to want to go and figure out how many square feet you have um, of counter space that you're going to be pouring. And they have a nice little chart down here, a coverage chart so that you can figure out this is your um, slab thickness for the their standard forms is inch and five eighths so with the inch and five eighths slab 
you're going to get 0.34 cubic feet per bag or 3 square feet per bag. So you'll know to just look down here and you can say figure out how many square feet you need. Their white concrete is looks like they got non destructive fiber system. It's 9700 psi after a 28 day cure time. Can be cast as thin as 7 8 of an inch. A quick cure allows for your grinding and polishing within 24 hours. And I found that to be true. And I've been really pleased with it. So if you go with the white, you can um, use that chart to make calculations on what you need. I know they had a stipulation on if you ha are doing a huge project, um, if it's over 18 bags, something that has to do with shipping. I had a 40 square foot project which is a rather large kitchen and I only needed like four I'm sorry 14 bags and I had a two bags left that's another thing I'd always go for extra because this stuff ships out of Pennsylvania and if you're not in Pennsylvania it takes a little while to get to you so after you decide if you're doing white uh, the great thing about these guys' products, too, is if you not want to do white concrete, they also have their liquicrete systems, which is additives with their chemical bonders and fiberglass in it. And you can mix these liquicrete bags one-to-one -to, -one to a standard 60-pound bag of quickcrete. So it makes it a little cheaper. I mean, it's... $17 for this liquid crete and then your standard six pound bag quick crete is going to be like I don't know five or six bucks so then you're you're just looking at about 25 bucks a bag by then but I would definitely recommend um, their additives here because it's going to increase the PSI of your concrete uh, help minimize or eliminate cracking well, it will eliminate cracking. So after you decide whether you're doing that, figure out what your quantities want to be. Um, the next thing you are going to need to order, if you need it, you need to decide if you have faucet knockouts, you might need those. Um, they're clips and fiberglass reinforcements. This is something we went with. Um, you could potentially use rebar or chicken wire um, a lot of people say professionals I consulted say that with steel products with the white concrete over the years you could potentially get um, bleed through like a, a amber rust that could bleed through with the white not so much with the gray so we went with this fiberglass mesh reinforcement and the clips that hold it in suspension that worked really well. They also have jigs so that you can help hold it easier in the chop saw. I didn't get one of these and I found it just as easy to cut in the chop saw. Stuff cuts very well. Um, they also have a sample kit for different profiles so you can order that ahead of time and just look at the profiles if you would like. What else do we need here? Um, sealants. We went with. Oh, those are stain sealants. They both have epoxy based sealers and water based sealers. We went with the water base. Um, you can stick more hot stuff on it. So we went with this guy and then we went with the polish on top of that. And so far it has worked really well. Um, I think they recommend that you redo the polish. The polish is basically like a wax sealant, and they recommend that you do that like once a year, which is super simple. You just can stick it on a microfiber rag or roller and just kind of like rub it in. It works great after you do your initial coats. Other options they have is they have silicone liners for your square edge that you can create live edges if you prefer like uh, 
a live stone edge look or even it looks like they have a wood grain one here or travestine even um so if that is something that you would desire you can do that we just went with square edge they also provide their own sinks abrasives they have uh tile molds so if you want to pour your own tile profiles for backsplashes and stuff with the white their white concrete they have those they've got their own abrasive line i just went with the ebay abrasives diamond pads and polishers they work just as well um for a little less of the price they have polishing tools and trowels and scrape boards um they say they really re recommended this magnesium float so i bought it and i found it just as easy to just use a steel trowel um but what I would recommend is you find a trowel with rounded edges. It will make your job a lot easier in that case. Like that guy right there. That guy is going to be the tool of ch your choice. With the rounded edges, it'll be easier to get a nice finish and it takes less skill not to cut that sharp edge in. So, once you've done all your calculations and got in ready for your pour, can get started so let's get started so the first thing you're gonna to want to do is get those cabinets secured really well to the floor then you want to get some heavy mill plastic and lay them over your cabinets before you put your dura board down and just screw right through your plastic with your dura board I used a half inch dura board same as like you'd use for laying tile in your bathroom or stuff like that you want to make sure all your seams are sealed up in your dirt board so you don't get wet concrete leaking down through the gaps and then you can start cutting your forms um, I would try to make it so that you have as least amount of seams as possible you use uh, duct tape grill tape to uh, hold those seams together and just use your standard chop saw to make those miter cuts it'll work really good um, on as you can see here I have a bar overhang and for this I just um, my brother-in-law actually was helping me out and he made a support frame that sits underneath that uh, 10 inch overhang for the pour so that uh, just the dirt board is not supporting the concrete before it gets secured. I do recommend having multiple people to at least two if not three people helping you out especially during the pour. The prep is not as big of a deal but during the pour um, it's good to have two people running concrete and at least one person doing the finish work. It makes things run so much smoother. I've helped a couple friends do theirs since then and yeah you can't do it by yourself so get some help you see I'm assembling the forms along the edge we're getting that support board under there and getting that all tidy together one thing we did was opt out of the under mount sink we went with your standard uh, top mount sink and with that I was able to use the back uh, splash form sections and create a dam using the sink cutout template for uh, the sink slot so in this case I ran my dirt board all the way across it and then screwed down the back form around where the sink would be to keep the concrete out of there so that way once it was cured I just had to cut out the dirt board and I didn't have to cut out the concrete itself once you're completely assembled it look should look something that resembles this uh, one important thing to do is make sure that once you're all assembled you go ahead and vacuum out all the cracks and crevices and take a wet damp washcloth and wipe the interface of all the mold surfaces because especially if you're going to use white concrete 
um, any dust flakes or debris that's left in there is going to be molded into the surface of your profile. So you want to make sure all that's clean. Um, next thing we're doing is going through and installing all the clips and all the fiberglass reinforcement mesh. You want to, Clips are put in like every foot or so, enough to hold the mesh up. I believe it's like a half inch from the surface is its ideal position. They have it designed out so the clips set in just the right spot. And once those are installed, it should look something like this. Next, we start the pour. This is what you don't want to do, though. As you can see here, this is kind of a darker gray substance that I just poured in. I misunderstood on the website, and I put their liquid creep um, additives into their existing concrete, and that is not what you want to do. Their existing concrete already has all those chemical bonders and fiberglass in it. Thankfully, I was able to uh, trial that out to the bottom and didn't know the difference, but... Um, the other thing that we did here is we also bought their white dye packs. So their concrete is already white to begin with. It's kind of an off-white color, but we brought their ultra-white dye packs, and that gave it a little more eggshelly white color that we were looking for just to give us that much more brightness in the kitchen. I just went and used a palm sander, just took the abrasive off it, to run my edges as a vibrator and reach up underneath to get as much air bubbles as I could out of it. I went to Ace Hardware and bought a $8 plastic 4 foot level just to use as a straight edge for screeding. And then we went to work. The stuff flows really well down in between the fiberglass reinforcement and it's kind of dissettling at first because if you've ever done concrete work before you want it to be a little bit thicker and this stuff just like runs all over the place and more or less self levels which is cool but it's just different at first and um, from what I understand that's just the way this stuff is supposed to work and it turned out wonderful so <laughs> Okay guys, it is Monday evening. We poured these things um, Saturday, midday, we got them all poured. And we're gonna start breaking these molds off. First, I'm gonna take a putty knife. We're just gonna cut these edges, make sure there's nothing stuck to them here. All the way down here. that they say that you can pull these forms two days after your pour which has been about two days and then um, can sand and polish as soon as uh, I think it's five days so I probably won't build the sand and polish these for like two more days so take the tape off the corner here it's holding the corner of the forms together Turned out pretty well. Over in this corner right here, I don't know if they're air bubbles or if it didn't get mixed quite as well as it should have. But I've got a little more shrinking, some bubbles, but we should be able to grind those out and fill it in with some of their patch. So, here goes nothing. Should be able to just grab a hold of these, pull down, break it off. Look at that nice clean edge. Let's 
there we go. So the outer part of the mold breaks off and the underside stays up underneath. And at last you get to do some polishing. I just used uh, one of the eBay uh, diamond polishers came with an assortment of diamond pads and it worked really well. It had a water injection port on it but I would just use a water bottle and wet it out so I wasn't flooding my kitchen and worked really well. I started with a 200 grit and worked my way all the way up to 3000 to get a complete polish on the countertop. Uh, one thing I do want to recommend and don't be stupid like me and wear your safety gear and that includes a plastic apron because concrete has lye in it and does not react well to your skin and I found that out the hard way. Next we move on to our sealers. We use the Z countertop uh, water-based sealer and I believe they recommend three to four coats and I believe uh, we did like five or six just because it's white and we wanted to be completely protected. So that's uh, one application every hour to let it dry an hour in between each coat and then use a um, tight um, celled roller so you don't leave little foam fuzzies on there and repeat the same thing after that with the wax polish i hope this video was helpful for you leave a like if it was please and subscribe we'll have some other videos coming up um we've been really pleased with these countertops we just love them um super easy to clean um they brighten the kitchen up and we get lots of light reflected off them so hope that was helpful if it was please subscribe thanks a bunch